so the general public will always think that adoption was saving a child, whether it's from, you know, the co-ed that got involved with the football player and, you know, and, and or the, you know, 14-year-old, um, whatever it is, you know, they're saving the child. Adoption's been around forever and ever and ever, obviously, because children lost parents when things, so when families were poor, they didn't have welfare, they put their kids in orphanages. In the 19th century, there was adoption, partly to take kids out of orphanages to after the war. And there was a big demand to have lots of kids, and so big families were heavily promoted, and people that couldn't have them wanted to adopt. Abortion was illegal. There were a lot of babies available. Okay, after abortion became legal in, in 1973, the, fewer babies were available, and at the same time, being a single mother was much more accepted. Adoption agencies had to find more children. You read the websites of adoption agencies, and you know, it's incredible the, 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 the narrative, the story that they give these women to get them to give up their babies. The pitch to women with unplanned pregnancies, it is give your child a better life. It is a very materialistic uh, pitch. You can go on to college, you can go on and have a successful career, you may have more money, essentially, and so will your child. If you love your child, you'll give him up. All of these contradictory statements, it, 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 it's, a, it's a just an interesting psychological kind of paradox, but, it, but it's effective, at least to some extent, because about 15,000 women every year do give up their, their newborns. What's funny about it is that I had an aunt, my father's sister, had adopted a boy when she was almost 42 and gotten divorced almost immediately. And I didn't ever make the connection. I'm thinking, oh, my child's gonna go to this wonderful two-parent family and picket fence and blah, blah, blah. That that was, in fact, the closest experience I had to adoption was not the case. But I'd always heard how wonderful it was for Aunt Katie that she had gotten Mikey. Wasn't that wonderful? And I never thought about, was that wonderful for Mikey? Was that wonderful for his, his birth mother? So. I was sat down with, um, like at a kitchen counter with like a Nesquik chocolate milk and my adoptive mother told me I was adopted, <laughs> so. All I knew is um, that her first name was Holly and that she was really, really young apparently whenever she uh, gave me up for adoption. I lived at home um, and was working part-time. Uh, I was out of high school. For me, it was just kind of like, oh, you know, like I, I could have had like a different set of parents and I could have lived somewhere else and I, I could have changed and been a completely different person than who I am now if I would have grown up and been with them. Why didn't my mom keep me or where do I really belong or just having that kind of identity crisis in a way. Um, well, I had first went to an unwed mother's home in another state and it felt like a very foreign um, environment to me. I wasn't really comfortable with being there and um, and so I remember one day calling on a payphone, telling my parents, you know, this, is, this isn't something that I want to do. I don't want to be here. And they said, okay, well, if you, um, if you want to come home, you're going to have to go through with this adoption. You know, we're not, we can't support you and, and we're not okay with you, um, keeping your daughter. And there was a couple that lived in another state that, um, they had two children of their own, but then they couldn't have more, and so they wanted um, another child, and that's where my daughter ended up going. She was not supposed to have contact with this person. She was supposed to forget about this person, that this baby that she carried and she gave birth to and she gave life to was supposed to leave her existence forever. And she was never to think about her again. One day I was um, just 
I was sitting in my adoptive father's room and he was on Facebook and I was kind of being nosy and looking at his computer screen and he uh, he had like the list of Facebook friends and I'm like oh who's this who's that and he was friends with her on Facebook so I'm like who's that and he said oh that's your that's your birth mother for a while all I really did was kind of stalk her Facebook page honestly it began with a Facebook message from Hannah to Holly that uh, said in classic teenager vernacular, Hi, I was adopted. Um, are you my mom? When she reached out to me, um, I just kind of, uh, I let her kind of talk a little bit, you know, and just to kind of see, um, you know, how things are going and if she wanted to talk to me or, you know, I, I don't know if she was going to be upset or if she felt like, you know, I would reject her or, you know. So over the next two years, we spent some time getting ready for Hannah to come meet us. Um, we set up a, a room in our home to be kind of a, a, a visitor suite for someone who was our flesh and blood and yet a stranger. Um, a teenage girl who was practically a young adult in her own right, who had her own family history, her own taste, her own style, her own needs, separate from how we and our children had grown together. Uh, so I set about trying to make her a refuge. And everything that we were trying to do was about allowing her to feel welcomed in both families so that she could heal whatever losses she experienced by losing her mother before she knew her and not feel that she had to be torn away from her other family. It was just, it was kind of just getting used to one another, honestly, in my opinion, and not just with my mom, but with my dad and then my siblings and everything. It was just trying to get to know one another because there was that whole time where you just, you didn't know them. It's almost like strangers and then having to go and meet them and get to know them. Where I lived, I it was just completely different 180 type of lifestyle. It was, Going from there to going to here is just, it's completely different. Things had gotten far harder for her than she was willing to admit to us at the time or to her adoptive dad. And it wasn't going well. I, I think her, her future would have, would have been a very difficult path from that point forward. You know, did she have that great life that people had told me she would have? because I was supposed to not think about me and I was supposed to think about my daughter and you know, give her a better life with a mom and a dad and, and not me. In a sense though, I guess I just was tired of the dysfunction and the life I was living and I felt like I deserved better. I decided, you know what, sure, I, I wanna live here and I wanna move here. And, I was the only one that like decided, I mean, no one else lives here, like not my adopted father, my adopted mother, or anyone like that. It was just, it was me. I don't think that adoption equals um, a good family. I think that it's the roll of the dice. You just don't know what you're going to get when you um, are put in a position where you have to relinquish your, uh, your child to adoption. It's, it's a very, I love my room, it's really, really cute. Um, it has, um, my favorite animal is owls, so it kind of has like these little owls kind of placed like in cute little places and everything. And I have like a really pretty cute um, purple and gray and white comforter and like a bunch of pillows on my bed. And just, it's it's a really cute room. But like the, the thing that gets me about my room is that above my bed, I have like, so you know, like the letter, um, like the, it's like, like sayings and it's like in the letters and you can kind of stick them to the wall. The, um, it, it says, uh, um, love, love you still, uh, I'm trying to remember what it, it <laughs> I'm just trying to remember exactly what it said. Okay, it says, love you, loved you yesterday, love you still, always have, always will.
just um it just it just means a lot to me because uh, growing up I never really I'm not saying I didn't feel loved or I didn't really feel cared about but it's it's not that same type of love or that deep that care of that that I wanted so to see that and know that my mom always loved me meant a lot Thank you.